Hello and welcome. In this video, we will focus on some tasks which may be useful after the volume mesh has been generated. These tasks can be used to extend the volume mesh beyond the original domain and translate or rotate the mesh. Eager to explore them? Let's go. The watertight geometry workflow provides some useful tasks which are extrude volume mesh and transform volume mesh that can be added to the workflow after the volume mesh has been generated. The extrude volume mesh task can be used to extend the boundary surfaces of the initial mesh beyond the boundaries of the original computational domain. This can be useful in cases like fluid flow through a pipe where Extending the fluid region on the inlet side may be required to allow the flow to develop. Transform volume mesh tasks provide the ability to rotate or translate the volume mesh with the option to create copies while applying these transformations. Let us see these tasks in action beginning with the extrude volume mesh task. Launch ANSYS Fluent in Meshing Mode Go to File, Read and select mesh and then pick the provided mesh file. Once Fluent finishes reading the file, you will notice that the watertight geometry workflow has been automatically set up and all the tasks till the generate the volume mesh task have already been successfully completed. This is because the mesh that we just read into Fluent has originally been created using the watertight geometry workflow and saved after completing generate the volume mesh task. Such files, when read back into Fluent, retain the information regarding their workflow. The model we have here is that of a generic ball or check wall, which consists of only the fluid domain and the void region of the wall. To add extrude volume mesh task to the workflow, right click on generate the volume mesh task, select insert new task and click on extrude volume mesh. Select the boundary surface which needs to be extruded. In this demo, we will select the inlet surface. The extruded region is created by extending each surface mesh element of the boundary surface layer by layer and the layer heights are calculated in a geometric fashion depending on the user inputs. There are two extrusion methods available to choose from, total height and first height. First, let us go with the default option, total height. In this method, the total height of the extrusion needs to be specified along with number of layers and growth rate. In this demo, we will change the total height to 30 mm and number of layers to 15 while keeping the growth rate at default value. In the console, the first height and last height of the layers are reported which are calculated using the inputs provided. A preview box is displayed to visualize the extent of the extrusion prior to executing the task. Click on extrude mesh to execute the task. An extruded region with the specified total height and the number of layers is created from the inlet surface with the height of each layer progressively increasing depending on the specified growth rate. The inlet surface has automatically moved from its original position to a new position which is at the top surface of the extruded region. To create the extrusion by specifying the height of the first layer, select first height for the extrusion method. Let us change the first height to 1 mm and keep all the other inputs same as before. The console reports the calculated last layer height and the total height of the extrusion. On updating the volume mesh, an extruded region is created from the inlet surface according to the inputs provided in the task. Observe that when the extruded mesh is clicked on, the adjacent region also gets selected. This is because the merge with adjacent region 
option in the advanced options was selected by default. When the option is deselected, the extruded and the adjacent regions are not merged and can be selected separately. The growth pattern option is used to select the pattern in which the extrusion layers must grow. The extrude volume mesh task allows extrusion by selecting multiple boundary surfaces at the same time. Moreover, extrusion is not limited to only planar surfaces and can be applied to curved surfaces as well. In all the cases, whether it is a planar or curved surface, the extrusion process is performed normal to selected surfaces. However, there are some limitations to the tasks such as not being applicable to zones that are already connected to cells. For more details on these limitations, please refer to the user guide. Let's now discuss the working of the transform volume mesh task. Using this task, translational or rotational transformations can be applied to the volumetric mesh. First is the translational type of transformation which is the default option. The model used here is a small section of a cross flow heat exchanger which when repeated along y and z axis gives the complete heat exchanger. After selecting the mesh object from the list of translational shifting, enter the values by which the selected volume must be shifted in the x, y and z directions. When the create, copy and translate option is set to yes, which is the default, copies of the original mesh are created and shifted and not the original mesh itself. You can create more than one copies for the transformation by specifying the number here. To apply the translation directly to the original mesh, just set the option to no, only translate. Use the preview transformation button to see the preview of what the volume mesh transformation will look like in the graphics window. In our demo, let's create two copies of the volume mesh and shift them by 40 mm in the y direction. The two copies of the original volume mesh are named by adding an underscore and its copy number to the original cell zone name. This is because the default setting of rename cell and phase zones was retained as yes. If the option is set to no, then the copied cell zones will be created with names that use colons and the copies id. The same naming methodology applies to the copied phase zones as well. Next, let's explore the second type of transformation which is the rotational type. Most of the inputs of rotational transformation are similar to the translational type except for few differences. For rotational transformations, the rotation axis origin, the coordinates of the rotational vector and the angle by which the mesh has to rotate needs to be specified. In the demo, 5 copies of the original mesh are created which are rotated about the x direction. When the model has no periodicity, then the manual method for transformation is utilized by default as already seen. However, when translational or rotational periodicity is detected in the model, the method of transformation is set to automatic use existing periodics by default. The manual option is also available along with the default option. For rotational periodicity, the values for the angle, the origin and rotation axis direction are automatically extracted from the periodic settings. The number of copies is automatically set to produce a full 360 degree model, however, this can be changed as required. On the other hand, in case of translational periodicity, the shift, direction and distance are automatically assigned as per the periodic settings. When using the automatic method, the merge the cell and phase zones input appears which is set to yes by default. This will merge all the cell and phase zones to create one entity and avoid any zone duplication. 
the cell and phase zone names of the original mesh are applied to the corresponding merge zones. If only cell zones need to be merged and phase zones are to be kept as separate entities, then set merge the cell and phase zones option to only cell zones and set this option to know if you do not want any merging to happen. Note that when the transformation is performed using the automatic method, the periodic boundaries on the original mesh will be replaced with the interfaces between the mesh copies which will be changed to the type internal after transformation. To summarize, in this lesson, we explored two tasks that can be useful after the volume mesh has been generated. The first is the extrude volume mesh task which can extend planar or curved boundary surfaces of the volume mesh based on the user inputs. The second is the transform volume mesh task which allows for translational or rotational types of transformation to be performed on the volume mesh. The transformations may be applied to the original mesh or to its copies. With this, we come to the end of this lesson.